If you've ever wondered how a bathroom scale works, well, I had to take one apart to try and dry it out because one of my kids dumped water all over it. So while I was unable to dry it out, and unfortunately it looks like the screen was permanently ruined by the water damage, hopefully we at least get a little educational video out of it and talk about how these things work. So over here on the right I have the top half, and on the left I have the bottom half. So if I flip this over, it's got the little feet that you would normally be in contact with the ground when you stand on this and you see that those feet move so the motion is very exaggerated here because i have it disassembled but if i flip it over you can see there's this cool little kind of spirally structure that allows that whole thing if i can get my camera to cooperate and focus to slide up into the body of the scale and normally that would be resting on the ground and you would be standing on it so the rest of the scale would move down and that would stay in place but when I press up on it from the bottom here, that moves up. And it is flexible plastic, but it's got a hard metal piece in the middle there. And that metal piece is normally in contact with one of these helical springs. So again, normally this would be flipped over. Oops, I just dumped a bunch of stuff out. This is the top of the scale. So a metal piece here is in contact with, I'm going to zoom in in a second, the point on one of these springs and you might say hey wait a minute that doesn't really look like a spring like you think of a coil spring like you would get out of a ballpoint pen or a clicker pen or something this does behave as a spring we're going to zoom in and talk about that a little more in a minute meaning it does deform and then bend back into place when you stand on it and step off the scale so it doesn't look like what you might think of when you first hear the word spring but it does act like a spring zooming in even more we see we've got that ball or contact point that would be resting on the metal contact over here and if we flip it over we can see a strain gauge and strain gauges are really there could be a topic for an entire video just about strain gauges and what they are and how they work so the very quick explanation here is it is very very thin see if i hold this sideways you can barely even see it it's a very thin sheet bonded to the metal materials so if the metal flexes or bends or stretches or compresses this strain gauge is going to move with it and there are really, really thin conductive traces on the surface of that strain gauge. And when they flex or bend or stretch or twist, their resistance changes. So we can use them to electrically measure the mechanical deformation of this spring. Now, these strain gauges are used in, again, all sorts of applications. You can probably find tons of videos on YouTube about them and their uses. That is the really quick overview. The other important part here is that Usually when you have something connected to a bunch of electronics, like a microcontroller, what's probably on the little control board that was over here inside the scale, I can flip that over, you don't measure resistance directly, you usually measure voltage. So there are three pads on this strain gauge. One of them I actually kind of scraped off when I was trying to get the blob of glue off of this to make it more visible. And two sections if you look at this you can see there's kind of a bunch of traces over here and a bunch of traces over here so this acts like a voltage divider or two different resistors in series where you can apply a voltage or power to the two outer terminals and then when those resistance resistances that yeah, resistances change the voltage you measure from the inner or middle terminal is going to change so rather than measuring the resistances directly you can measure the voltage change, which is, again, then easier to process with a microcontroller. So not going to explain the math behind voltage dividers in this video, but I have a whole intro to electronics series on my channel that goes into Ohm's Law and all the math you need to understand there. So basic idea, again, you have two resistors in series. You apply some voltage from a battery or something across the outer terminals, and then you can measure a voltage change on the inner terminal. We're going to switch over and demonstrate that next. So here I have my setup. I have one of these springs with the strain gauge and the wires still attached. I had scraped them off of this other one so you could see the strain gauge. I am applying a 3.3 volt power supply to the outer two terminals on the strain gauge using the regulated 3.3 volt output on an Arduino because I don't have a real benchtop power supply. And you can see if I measure the voltage on the middle terminal, I get about half that. Oops, I'm moving my wires around too much and I'm getting a short circuit. 1.64 volts. The voltage is low enough that I'm going to switch down to the lower range on my multimeter and see that I'm getting 1,644 millivolts. Now, the deflections that you measure with a strain gauge are really, really small. So if I press down on this, 
you can see I'm only changing it by literally one millivolt. I'm going from 1,644 to 1,645-ish, but I'm also pressing this down on the surface of my wooden workbench here, and this little metal ball is actually just indenting the surface. You remember that over here, it would have been pressing on a piece of metal that's not going to indent as much, so that's gonna help deform the spring a little more. I'm also just pressing on this with my hands. I'm not standing on it and putting all of my weight on it. So, whoops, short circuit. Let's see if I can press on this as hard as I can and get the voltage to change as much as I can. So I'm at 1,644 millivolts. If I press down on this really hard, I can't get it to change more than one millivolt. So the other key part of this that's missing is amplification. It's really hard to measure a change that's small, these super tiny voltages from a strain gauge. So you're not typically just going to hook this directly up to a microcontroller or directly up to a multimeter and try to measure a change of one millivolt. You're going to have an amplification circuit that amplifies that super, super tiny um, voltage change and usually do that using something called an op amp or operational amplifier which I do not have my own videos about yet. I think actually I might have one older one on my channel. Granted plans to add more eventually, but you can find lots of tutorials about op amps and again maybe what's more detailed videos about signal conditioning and amplifying the circuit from a strain gauge out there on YouTube. Finally, note that in your bathroom scale, remember you actually have four of these, so it is probably doing something like measuring all four and taking an average or adding them or something to calculate the total weight and then display that rather than a voltage, it's gonna convert it to units of pounds or kilograms, which are ultimately going to display on the screen of your scale, if it's not broken like mine because your kids dumped water all over it. But hopefully, if you watch this video, you are not doing it because you also have a broken scale that you need to take apart, but you were just curious how these work. So if you have a comment or any thoughts or think I got something wrong in this video, go ahead and leave a comment below this one. Thank you.